my name is dr dinub and i'm an orthodontist so today i'm going to share with you a case a special case a special case because in this case has eight impacted teeth As you can see here, the patient had a, a canine, a pre, two premolars, that is in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, a canine was impacted. In the third quadrant, as you can see, the patient had again a canine and two premolars. Uh, and in the fourth quadrant, as you can see, she had a, a, a second premolar that is horizontally impacted. There was uh, some amount of procrastination and spacing in the upper and lower anteriors. So the treatment plan as I planned as you guys know uh, there is more than one way to treat the case but this is uh, I'm sh just sharing this case how I did it this may not be the ideal but uh, as you can see it has worked out and I would like to share this case so the main aim of the treatment was uh, just to uh, bring about all the impacted teeth into occlusion and close the anterior spaces or any crowding or rotation that was there and that's it the there was no uh, nation correction or overjet correction plan as there was not much needed so then uh, let's start into the case so what i planned was to bring about all the impacted teeth into the occlusion with the minimal amount of time and minimum amount of effort so I started with the teeth that was most nearest to the occlusal plane. As you can see, it was the in the first quadrant, the two uh, premolars. So I just extracted the deciduous teeth, and uh, I could see the tip of the two impacted uh, premolars, and uh, two lingual buttons were placed on them, and uh, an e chain was placed, and and, uh, and a single helix spring was placed on the uh, second premolar in the first quadrant. So within a month, as you can see, both of the premolars was erupted mostly into the occlusal plane. Uh, I placed an wound six arch wire and uh, brought them uh, more into the occlusal plane. I did not use any elastics, just normal e chain over the arch wire to bring them into the occlusion. So next, I thought I will deal with the canines. So canines as you can see they are both on the uh, palatal aspects so surgical exposition was done on both of them two uh, lingual buttons were placed so what i thought to do was uh, to place a ballista spring on the one canine and a helix on the other in the single archware the archware that i used was uh, a no one uh, two zero australian archware i did not use any uh, secondary wire or anything this uh, arch wire like, as you can see and uh, ballista spring on one and a single helix on the other both canines were attached to the tied on to the springs with e chains as you can see and the progress as you can see is happening and uh, after few months the canines were erupted into the occlusal arch and the arch wire was after the canines were almost erupted i changed the arch wires and uh, I used an uh, 1 6 archway to bring them into more into the occlusal plane. So, with this, uh, the upper arch is done, both the canines and both the premolars were erupted into the occlusal. Now, moving on to the lower arch, so you can see the lower molars on the third quadrant, that is, first molar on the third quadrant, had drifted mesially, leading to loss of space for all the three, that is, the canine and the two premolars so what i decided was to extract the premolar that is the first premolar and the third quadrant so the canines and the premolar was extracted and uh, both the premolar and the canine was exposed at this time and the deciduous tooth was removed and the canine and premolars were exposed and lingual button, button was placed on both of them now what i see is that the canine was on one side and the premolars on, on the other side and both needed to move occlusally and mesially. So what I chose was to place two helix on the archware that is again I used a 012 Austrian archware 
and helix was placed and crisscross each ends were placed on both of them so what happened here was both the canine and the premolar moved closely and uh, the canine was tipped distally and the premolars was tipped mesially so as you can see uh, after few months both of them was erupted into the occlusal plane now there was still a rotation of the premolar canine and uh, that was dealt with later and the uh, now moving on to the fourth quadrant as you can see the premolar was uh, horizontally impacted and needed to upright needed to be uprighted so what i chose was again the same archware and the lower archware with the two helix on one side and uh, i choose a helix on the other side also now in the uh, this premolar what we wanted was an uncontrolled bodily tipping that is the uh, occlusal movement of the crown of the premolar and the lingual movement of the roots so after the extraction of the deciduous teeth the lingual button was placed on the distal aspect of the premolar which was uh, that was visible and uh, each end was placed so this caused the crown to move occlusally and distally whereas the root to tip distally and as you can see after few months the crown was uh, uprighted and uh, then then with this all the teeth was brought into the occlusion now all that was required was just to align the all the teeth correct the rotation and close the spaces which i was i did with the normal uh, 725 night tie archware and 925 ss and the settling was done and the teeth was uh, deboned and yes you can see patient had a normal occlusion on the right side but uh, there was some amount of as there was ankle loss and uh, mesial drifting of the molars on the left side and the occlusion was uh, a bit off on the left side you guys enjoyed the video there is more than one way to treat a single orthodontic case i just shared a way that i did hope this was helpful for you guys and uh, uh, hope i get to make more videos thank you